Hi, Lev. Um, I hear that I shouldn't blink around you. Not feeling very talkative today. Um, but one person who is feeling talkative is Russell T. Davis, the showrunner of Doctor Who. Russell, hello. Hello. Happy Doctor Who Day. Happy Doctor Who Day. Hooray. I mean, I was going to say, how are you celebrating? But I'm guessing you're just <laughs> the busiest man in showbiz right now. Do you know what? Every day is Doctor Who Day for me. I'm like a child of Christmas. Um, but we are having, later on, we're having a cake on the TARDIS. So we're a little bit of celebration. But really, we're in the middle of shooting two episodes. So we'll just get back to work. You're so far ahead of schedule. Like, we've already got the second season of Shooties episodes. Yes, we are. We're on three episodes into Shooties season, but that's the way the effects take so long to make now. All the big shows are like this, to be honest. It's like many of them don't get followed as much as Doctor Who is. It's like, you know, most people would have no idea of this. It's like, you're a fan, I take it, so you know that. My sisters wouldn't have a clue what's going on. So to most of the public, it's just business as normal. And, and how does it feel to be back? Like, how does it compare now working on Doctor Who compared to when you worked on Doctor Who in 2005? It's a lot bigger, it's a lot bolder, it's, a, it's more of a bully, there's a lot to do. Um, it's, 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 it's more work, believe it or not, than it ever was. It's like Jane Tranter, our producer, said this morning that it's more like making three series at once now. So, so now we're doing two series at once, and that's six series. It's like, it's busy, but... We're old and wise and hairy, so we're here to do the work. It, and look, I keep saying how much hard work it is. It's not like being a nurse or a teacher. It's not that kind of work, so it's all fun. And um, Doctor Who, I mean, you look no further than the effect that Doctor Who has had here yes. in Wales. Yes. Um, that is such a, a big thing for us here in this country. It, how does yes. that feel? It, I think it's, it's what we wanted. It's like when I was first asked, although I'm Welsh, I was living in Manchester, and they asked us to come and do this here, and I was absolutely delighted and really passionate about Wales and proud about Wales and proud of the staff you can get here. So I was all for it, and I have to say, I dispute their figures. I know they're announcing today that Doctor Who's released like 134 million million pounds into the Welsh economy. I think it's five times that. I think they genuinely think they're having to be modest and they're scared of Freedom of Information Act and things like that. But actually it's far more than that. Over 15 years, it's five times that. And that's, it's important to say to people, when people talk about how much a television programme costs, if a programme costs two million pounds to make, people go, oh, that's expensive as though we spend the money on glitter and champagne. What that two million pounds mean, it's not just money to the actors, but to the carpenters, the riggers, the drivers, the cooks, the surrounding town, the hotels, the bars, the shops. It's money that goes into, it's money that's spent in Cardiff and the surrounding area of South Wales. So it all pours into the city. It's just genuinely far more than this research says. And, um, you know, uh, Welsh history, such an important part of our, of our country, um, very rarely seen in Doctor Who so far. Yes. Would you ever consider doing an episode on Welsh history? I would, I think, well, I've never... Oh, I'm, to, I can't, I'm kind of amazed there's never been a great BBC drama about the Rebecca Riots, actually, where men dressed up as women in order to riot. I think it's a fascinating thing. So whether that's Doctor Who or whether that's my next drama, full stop, we'll find out. And um, Doctor Who Unleashed, we've got to talk about as well. I was just chatting to Stefan the other day. We actually, me and Stefan realised we're actually on the same agency. How mad is that? Ah. And that's so Welsh, isn't it? <laughs> it's like, oh, you know, hang on, you know him, you know him, you hear him. And um, I think we should just exterminate here. everyone who walks past <laughs> the camera. Um, but, um, you know, Doctor Who Confidential, for example, or Doctor Who Unleashed, it had such a kind of um, an impact on people who want to go into the creative industry, myself included. Oh, great. Like, actually, you know, when I was younger, I remember I wrote into the BBC sent scripts oh, that I'd inspired no and um, no but like how does that feel knowing that you're almost nurturing the future of television well, I think it's very important the behind the scenes stuff opens the door says this isn't uh, for people born with a silver spoon in their mouths we've got I think we have unprecedented behind the scenes coverage greater than any show in the world I know that's a fact we've got once Doctor Who finishes on Saturday night you can turn to Doctor Who Unleashed which is a half hour show about the making of it we have separate behind-the-scenes footage on the website, which is sections that are like 20 minutes long. Huge amounts of coverage. You have a podcast analysing the episode. You also go to the iPlayer, you'll find an in-vision commentary. You'll find David Tennant watching The Star Beast and doing a DVD commentary on it free on your iPlayer. There's never been coverage like this on any. You can look at those big glossy shows on Amazon. None of them have this. And um, Doctor Who, like, the future has never looked brighter. I've used those words quite a lot in, in, in the lead up to what's currently happening with Doctor Who. Um, your grand plan, do you have a grand plan each year or do you kind of just almost... To be honest, the grand plan is to sustain this. It's very hard work. Um, 
and we're only one year in really, although we're on the second year now, but that proves we're one year in, so there's a long way to go, and we need to set up structures that will do this, but our ambition keeps on outstripping our capabilities, and that should always be the way, so yeah, we'll keep pushing and rising. And just finally, uh, Russell, um, you know, Doctor Who has been so successful for 60 years now, how does one keep it still successful in 60 years time well that's the chat that's my day to day job it's like you might as well say describe your job to me and not just me but all the people here we've got heads of department here we've got producers here and of course the magnificent actors you just look at the casting of Shuti Gatwa and Millie Gibson so like brand new talent comes in extraordinary talent talent you couldn't have imagined a couple of years ago they come in they burn up the screen and that, has, that, that lifts it to new heights so yeah what is amazing is just chatting to you now. The enthusiasm just radiates from you about the future of this programme. I'm, I'm like this about my tea. Um, <laughs> aren't, aren't we all? Hooray! Um, Russell, from all of us at Wales and Nine, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you very much. That was brilliant. Thank you for that. That was perfect. Thanks, thank you. That was brilliant.